It's my pleasure to yield to the distinguished gentleman from New Jersey, well known for his commitment to first responders throughout the nation, Mr. Pasquale, for three and a half minutes. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank the young lady from Texas. I want to associate myself uh, with the words of uh, Scott Taylor, congressman from uh, Virginia. Yes, this is National Police Week. We'd like to see the passage of H.R. 285. As a lead Democrat sponsor of this legislation and co-chair of the Congressional Law Enforcement Caucus, I know the importance of enhancing and improving communication and collaboration between members of the law enforcement community and the public they serve. Thousands of law enforcement officers and their families have traveled to Washington, D.C. this week to pay tribute to those who've made the ultimate sacrifice. While we give thanks every day to the men and women serving and protecting our communities, this week is a perfect opportunity, Mr. Chairman, to show America's law enforcement that we have their back here in the Congress of the United States and around the country. Every day our nation's law enforcement officers put their lives on the line to protect our families, our friends, our children, our neighbors, in our communities. The brave men and women who wear the badge understand the dangers of their job but they heed the call to serve and willingly face those risks in order to create safe communities for all of us. Tragically, 360 names will be added to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial here in Washington this year. Under 29 of those lost their lives in the line of duty last year. Every name added heard the call to protect and serve, and made the ultimate sacrifice, leaving behind family and friends, brothers, sisters in arms, and their communities. As we remember and pay tribute for that ultimate sacrifice, we acknowledge the dangers inherent in the job our law enforcement officers do every day. This resolution before us recognizes the bravery and sacrifices of the men and women in blue. It recognizes that we must do more to enhance and improve communication and collaboration between members of the law enforcement community and the public they serve. It's my hope that during this police week, we could come together to honor the sacrifices made by law enforcement. Mr. Speaker, I also wish to thank the other lead sponsors, including, of course, Congressman Scott Taylor, Tom O'Halloran, and my brother, the Republican co-chair of the Law Enforcement Caucus, David Reichert. Fourteen years we've been co-chairs. We're going to miss him when he leaves us. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I ask for a big vote on this 285, H.R. 285, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, uh, I do not have any additional speakers and I'm prepared to close. Gentleman, gentlewoman from Texas is recognized. I'm prepared to close and I ask the speaker to allow me to address the House for such time as I might consume. First of all, let me thank Mr. Pasquale and the Law Enforcement Caucus, Mr. Reichert, and of course we uh, pay tribute to his service, and certainly Mr. Pasquale has been on the front lines uh, for a very long time, and I have uh, been delighted to join him first when we were on the Homeland Security Committee and then continuing on the caucuses that deal with our first responders across the nation. Uh, let me indicate uh, to my colleagues that I also rise for the support of H. Res 285 and to thank Mr. Pasquale, Mr. Taylor, 
uh, and to also um, reinforce uh, what I hope will be a worthy discussion going forward on the Law Enforcement Trust and Integrity Act, which has a, a number, a wide range of civil rights groups uh, and uh, police groups who are already uh, beginning to support us. This bill has been introduced before, and we were lucky enough to get a number of good co-sponsors of organizations who believe uh, in our uh, community police cooperation. I happen to come from Houston, uh, where uh, our first African-American police chief was Lee Brown, who is known as the father of community-oriented policing, which is the premise, I believe, of this resolution, getting to know your officers, engaging with your officers, uh, and, and finding a way uh, to empower uh, both police and community working together. Uh, so the Law Enforcement Trust and Integrity Bill, which I uh, look forward to working with uh, the ranking member of the full committee and ranking member of the subcommittee uh, and the chairman of the full committee uh, and the chairman of the subcommittee on crime, um, deals with accreditation, uh, deals with development programs that are helpful to law enforcement, um, processes to address questions raised, um, and as well, uh, the a medallion for the family members, collection of data, and, and what I like, the professional training, funding that will come about to additional professional training that many of the departments would long for and welcomed uh, when we began to discuss it. So HRES 285 is uh, a very important statement being made uh, that I hope uh, that all of my members uh, will join too. And that is that we need good police community relations. We need to develop and empower the creation of police and community alliances. We do it in Houston, Texas. We have layered officers. Most people have never heard of constables. We have them uh, in Texas. The rangers, we still have the rangers with historic history. Of course, we have our police in the different cities and counties and, uh, and small towns. Uh, and then we have uh, the deputy sheriffs and sheriffs in our counties all throughout. And many of these organizations do public service and barbecues, and uh, certainly we all gather together when we have a person fallen uh, in duty. And as well, uh, we continue to work when there's a tragedy dealing with civilian as well. So we must do everything we can to improve the relationship between law enforcement and the communities we serve. And research shows that in order to succeed, we must expend the resources needed to improve communication and collaboration between law enforcement and the public. There will be many offices up this week. We should see all of them and engage in a friendly and welcoming way. And we should reinforce the value of having a nation of laws and those who enforce it, that we're also neighbors, and that we should look forward to increased community, police, interaction, and relationships. And with that, I ask my colleagues to support this resolution and let us work together for good in a nation as great as America is. With that, I yield back my time. The gentlewoman from Texas yields back. The question is, Virginia is now recognized. Mr. Speaker, uh, this is a good bill. I urge my colleagues to support it, and I yield back to balance my time. The gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and agree to House Resolution 285? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. Say no. In the opinion of the chair, two thirds being in the affirmative. The gentleman from Virginia. On that, recognized. I ask for the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. Sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed. purpose. Does the gentleman from Virginia seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 4854, the Justice Served Act of 2018. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 4854, a bill to amend the DNA Analysis Backlog Elimination Act of 2000 to provide additional resources to state and local prosecutors and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Goodlatte, and the gentlewoman from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee, will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Virginia. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on H.R. 4854 currently under consideration. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. 
I rise in strong support of H.R. 4854, the Justice Served Act of 2018, introduced by the gentleman from Texas, Judge Carter. All of us in this body are familiar with Debbie Smith and the tragedy of her attack and the triumph of the law that bears her name. Many of us have had the pleasure of meeting Debbie and her husband, Rob, and hearing her story firsthand. The Debbie Smith Act was the nation's first piece of legislation aimed at ending the DNA backlog that plagued our state crime labs. The Debbie Smith DNA Backlog Grant Program was created in 2004, and since then it has enabled states to process more than 725,000 cases and upload more than 327,000 DNA profiles into the FBI's Combined DNA Index System, or CODIS. I had the honor to be the chief sponsor of the Debbie Smith Reauthorization Act of 2014. When Judge Carter reached out to me about this bill, I was encouraged, but I also wanted to know how Debbie Smith felt about it. I learned that not only did she support it, she and others helped craft it. When we reached out to Debbie and Rob to get their thoughts on the bill, they stated, getting hits doesn't mean as much if we cannot prosecute. I agree with Debbie and Judge Carter on this very important point. The bill in front of us today makes a very small but important change to the Debbie Smith Act. That small change will increase the capacity of prosecutors to address the backlog of violent crime cases involving suspects identified through DNA evidence. This bill will allow victims of crime and their families to receive justice by giving prosecutors the tools they need to investigate, solve, and close cold cases. That small but vitally important change is why the Justice Served Act of 2018 is endorsed by the National District Attorneys Association, Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, Debbie Smith, Major County Sheriffs of America, Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association, Sergeants Benevolent Association, the Fraternal Order of Police, the National Association of Police Organizations, Consortium of Forensic Science Organizations, Joyful Heart Association, the National Alliance to End Sexual Violence, the Major Chief Cities Chiefs, and the National Criminal Justice Association. We in this body should join these organizations in supporting this very important piece of legislation. I want to thank my friend, the gentleman from Texas, Judge Carter, for introducing this legislation and all of his hard work in supporting it. To, par to paraphrase Debbie and Rob, getting a hit is nice, but ensuring justice is served is better. Please join me in supporting the Justice Served Act of 2018. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves his time. The gentlewoman from Texas is recognized. The speaker, I ask to address the House for such time as I might consume. Woman's Let me, from the beginning, um, uh, acknowledge uh, the ranking member for being on the floor on these important bills uh, during uh, this uh, police law enforcement week in commemoration. Um, uh, these, this week is one of the weeks that um, over the years that all of us as members have enjoyed the most seeing a lot of our uh, law enforcement representatives from our hometown jurisdiction and just seeing them from all over the nation. So I rise in support of H.R. 4854, the Justice Served Act of 2018. Thank my colleague, uh, Mr. Pasquel, my fellow Texan, Judge Carter, and other members for bringing this forward. This legislation would help ensure that prosecutors have the resources to go after perpetrators of violent crimes, specifically those who have been identified by DNA evidence. I want to just say that again, Mr. Speaker, violent crimes which leave in its, uh, in its wake uh, either the uh, bloody loss of life or some victim uh, that is ruined for life uh, because of the viciousness of the crime, some of their children, families, uh, elderly. So this is a very important element of law enforcement is the fair investigation of crimes and bringing forward uh, the perpetrator in a fair and just and constitutional manner. To do so, they need tools. Congress has appropriated over $100 million per year for the last decade to reduce the DNA backlogs and improve uh, crime laboratory capacity. The Justice Serve Act of 2018 does something unique. It capitalizes on these investments by allowing a portion 
of the Debbie Smith Grant Program to be allocated to prosecute perpetrators of violent crimes. Mr. Goodlatte is right. I remember meeting uh, Ms. Smith uh, and the uh, tragedy that she faced, but the way in which she wanted to commit uh, to making life better for many others. And I thank her for that And as she appeared before our committee in years past. According to the FBI data, over a million people were victims of violent crimes nationwide in 2016. And in many of these cases, especially cases involving sexual violence, DNA evidence is a crucial component of the prosecuting the perpetrators. The Judiciary Committee is about to begin uh, its um, uh, effort of reauthorizing the Violence Against Women Act, of which uh, my office has worked extensively with other members who have previously uh, had a great commitment to this legislation. We look forward to a bipartisan uh, initiative, and we know that uh, in the elements of sex crimes and domestic violence, the DNA kits are extremely important, among other evidence that can be found. Prosecutors often, however, face large caseloads and lack the resources to properly ensure that violent crimes are adjudicated in a timely manner, even when a suspect has been identified through DNA evidence. H.R. 4854, the Justice Serve Act of 2018, encourages the resolution of this problem by providing additional resources, none to take away from the important work of uh, the purpose of the uh, act, but to add these additional resources as are available through this legislation, prosecutors need to investigate, solve, and close these cases, giving them those resources to do so. Remember, investigating, solving, and closing have the uh, component of uh, making sure that we uh, do justice as well. This includes additional funding for the prosecution of cold cases where new forensic technology has identified a suspect. It's important to note that the need for additional funding is not, is not the only problem that impacts prosecutors' ability to uh, deal with perpetrators of violent crimes. But according to the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, RAIN, the overwhelming backlog of untested DNA evidence is currently one of the biggest obstacles to prosecuting perpetrators of sexual violence. Based on public reports, at least 100,000 rape kits have set untested in evidence rooms, warehouses, and the like. Uh, these rape kits often contain DNA evidence collected through a sexual assault, forensic exam, medical process, where evidence is collected from a victim's body or clothes. This evidence is a crucial factor in achieving justice, and it's vital that prosecutors have this evidence. So this legislation, uh, Debbie Smith Act, was passed to alleviate my comments that I just previously made. And it's been enacted since 2004, uh, and it's made a great impact. But now we have the opportunity to use some of those resources to help move along some of these violent cases and to assist prosecutors again in the fair adjudication, the just adjudication to bring justice uh, to those who have suffered a violent criminal act, lost their life, and certainly uh, enhance the justice system. So I ask my colleagues to support this legislation, and at this time, as the Speaker, I'll reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I reserve. The gentleman from Virginia reserves. The gentlewoman from Texas is recognized. Yes, I am um, ready to yield to the distinguished gentleman from New Jersey uh, who has worked uh, without ceasing on legislation uh, that will help our law enforcement officers, and I'd like to yield to him uh, three and a half minutes. Uh, Mr. Pasquale of The New gentleman Jersey. from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also want to rise today in strong support of this bipartisan piece of legislation, Justice Served Act, H.R. 4854. As the lead Democrat sponsor of the piece of legislation and co-chair of the Congressional Law Enforcement Caucus, I want to thank Judge Carter in authoring this bill. Currently, funding is available through the Debbie Smith Act to reduce the DNA rape kit backlog. However, these funds do not address the growing backlog in the prosecution pipeline. Unfortunately, this backlog is occurring because resources are limited and there are not enough funds to reopen every case, even when DNA analysis has identified a suspect. That's not acceptable. In my home state, New Jersey, we are well familiar with this issue. Due to lack of resources and regulations, the extent of the untested 
rape kit backlog in New Jersey is unknown. That itself is unacceptable. Addressing the rape kit backlog would bring justice for the many rape victims across our state and many others. Victims like a 15-year-old girl who was assaulted while working at a deli in New Jersey a few years ago and whose assaulter was finally brought to justice in 2013 using DNA evidence, but only after he assaulted another young woman. As a result, many of the rapists going undetected are repeat offenders. Countless assaults could be prevented and trauma spared if we caught these perpetrators the first time. And addressing the backlog could bring justice to the falsely accused as well. Last year, we learned the story of Rodney Roberts, a New Jersey man who was coerced by his own lawyer to plead guilty for the kidnapping and the rape of a 17-year-old girl in 1996, despite professing his innocence. For 10 years, Roberts appealed to have his DNA tested against the original rape kit, but prosecutors claimed it was nowhere to be found. Eventually, the rape kit was located. The DNA evidence cleared him of all wrongdoing in 2014, after he served 10 years in jail. There are too many incidents in which an untested rape kit is lost, prosecutors do not have resources, and innocent people are harmed. To address this funding gap, the Justice Served Act authorizes the Debbie Smith Act to provide prosecutors with the resources and the funds to reopen, investigate, and close cold cases. Going forward, I will look forward to working with Judge Carter to ensure that the Debbie Smith Act is properly funded so we can keep our promise to survivors of sexual assault. I would like to thank the National District Attorneys Association, the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, and Debbie Smith for their support for H.R. 4854. Mr. Speaker, I urge passage of the Justice Serve Act. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Jersey yields back. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, uh, I have no additional speakers.